How many of y'all know it's the last days? Amen. If you don't, you know now, right? We're in the last minutes. Wickedness is roaring. But God is always filling his people and preparing his people to combat and expose the strategies of the enemy if we are listening, if we are hearing, and if we are seeing. One of the things that needs to be done is the eyes must become off of us. Off of us. Jesus said, unless the Lord builds a house, we labor in vain. Amen? Amen. Unless the Lord builds a house, we labor in vain. And we want to stop building our house. That was King David's great delight. It was his delight. He said, Lord, I want to build your house. He said, look at we, I, he, he was all, man, look at I, I sleep in the house and all of the stuff, and you, you're in that tent. Of course, it was intense. And, she, and, and David said, man, I want to build you the best place of habitation. See, it should be a desire for me and you to build the habitation for the Lord. We must establish a habitation for him all the time. And his habitation should be within us. Amen. So that means there's something that we must do all the time. It's called maintenance. Amen? Amen. Spiritual maintenance. We must maintain. Why? Because we want to maintain his habitation. David couldn't build the house of God because he had unclean hands. His hands were contaminated. But the Lord said, okay, look at you can't do it. But you, you, I'll give you the plans and give it to your son Solomon. And Solomon built the house of God. Phenomenal. And the Lord spoke to Solomon and he said, listen, you do what I ask you to do. I'm behind you, and so is heaven. But if you don't, it's going to be curtains. It's going to be a hard time. And he said, okay, now, while you're doing this, I want you to ask what I can do for you. What can I do for you? And Solomon didn't ask for a new Mercedes. He didn't ask for anything. He said, give me wisdom. Oh that I may lead your people. See, he wasn't looking for anything for himself. Wisdom, that I may lead your people. See, when you, when you begin to learn how to walk in the Spirit, and when you're walking in the Spirit, and wisdom is essential. Why? Because wisdom and understanding. Amen? Wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. In the spirit, these are kingdom things. God uses the things of the, of the eternal realm of the wisdom and knowledge and understanding from the eternal realm to impart in me and you because the wisdom of this world brings glorification to a man. The wisdom from above brings glorification to the king. And only the wisdom that's from above and the understanding from the above, of above sets an individual to where he has a kingdom mindset. Everyone say kingdom mindset. And that is so required. You and I cannot be about the Father's business without a kingdom mindset. Jesus came into this world with a kingdom mindset. Everything was about the kingdom, not himself. See, the Lord is my shepherd. I won't lack. I won't want. Why? Because he provides all of my needs according to his riches and glory. And anything that we ask for should be a desire already imparted from him in me and you. Not from the outside influence or the things that we need. What is it, Lord, that you want me to ask for? I'm going to tell you, most of the time, he's going to say, first, let me grant you some more wisdom. Let me get you more understanding. Why? Because wisdom and understanding bring discernment. And discernment is vitally important. Why? Because you know time. When you have discernment, you can sense so many things. You see through the physical into the spiritual. Discernment is essential. It is associated with everything that you and I do. 
Discernment will expose what's clean and unclean, what's holy and unholy, what's God's time and not God's time, what's of him and what's not of him. It is an exposer of all things, discernment. Does everybody have this? Come on, lift your hands to heaven and say, Lord, grant me more wisdom. Grant me more understanding that I may have the discernment to see all things, hear all things, and do all things according to your plan and purpose in Jesus' name. You know, so many times we blame the devil for everything. And the devil didn't make you do it. You allowed him. You accepted the influence because you did not discern. You know, one of the things, so many people go, well, why didn't the Lord, why does the Lord allow these things? Because he's the Lord. Amen. You know what? When Lucifer fell from office and position, God could have destroyed him there because of his rebellion. But he didn't. What did he do? He said, you know what? I'm going to use you for a purpose. To fulfill my plan and my purpose. Why? So I can train up my people to be like me. Because you're not, not going to know what's holy unless you know what's unholy. You're not going to know what's clean unless you know what's unclean. Does everybody understand that? So, so many times people go, why, does, why did God allow? Because it's a part of his purpose and his plan. One day, well, all evil and Lucifer and all the demonic forces and demons and fallen angels will be removed. But in the meantime, he's training for reigning. And we must be willing to allow him to train us. And what is required, I'm telling you, this is the heart of God, that we become, have a kingdom mindset. Because as a man thinks, so he is. Amen. Kingdom mindset. That means we're not men pleasers, we're God pleasers. That means we put everything with him first. That means we seek him with all of our heart. Listen, we can go play football, baseball, basketball, go to the gym, and go to concerts, and root like crazy. And give everything we have with all of our strength. But when it comes to worship or praise God, not everything. You know, God's a jealous God. Does everybody understand? People can work six days a week, seven days a week, and work very hard. But when it comes to worship, they don't give them the same amount of strength. They don't give them the same amount of time. They don't give them the same amount of concern. They don't give them the same amount of effort, and they don't give them the same amount of reverence. They give their boss more reverence than they do God Almighty. Amen. Amen. This is from the Spirit now. This is not about carnal living. It's about kingdom living. And I saw two clouds, and I'm telling you, I saw them again this morning in my prayer. And he said to me, he said, a cloud of rain is coming, which is his glory. And there's a cloud of coals coming. Coals. Coals. Hailstone and coals. <laughs> That's coming too. While we are in perilous times, where there's perilous times, there's also glorious times. Amen. There is an all-out war going on in the heavenlies. Amen. I'm telling you. And you're either part of that battle or you're not. If you're about yourself, you can't be a part of that battle. And if you're not in the battle, you will become a casualty. No one escapes. Why? Because you cannot escape the enemy without the power of God. You just can't. And there's a place where God's saying, it is time, it is now, and be ready. Is everybody okay? Amen. So there must be spiritual maintenance. Everyone say spiritual maintenance. spiritual maintenance. 
I'm going to go somewhere first before we. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. In verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16. What does it say? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God as God has said. What has he said? I will what? Dwell in them and walk among them. And I'll be their God, and they shall be my people if they do what? Therefore means if. That means you must cooperate. That is the price. Amen. If what? If you what? Come out from among them. In other words, coming out from among them means not thinking the way they do. Amen. We have a kingdom mindset, not a selfish mindset. And be separate, says the Lord. And do not touch what is unclean. Well, if you're not kingdom-minded, you're touching things that are unclean. And then he says, I will receive you. And I'll be a father to you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Now watch this. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us what? Cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the what? Spirit. That means there must be maintenance. Perfecting holiness in the what? Fear, reverence, honor, and respect of God. That's connection. See, when you're disconnected, that's gone. Some believers have, I'm telling you, the people who have proclaimed to know Jesus have never been connected yet. Because you can only be connected by spirit, not by letter. Has everybody got it? It's not a knowledge connect. It's a spirit connect to connect. Spirit to spirit. In Galatians chapter 5. Oh, glory. Many are falling short of what God has for them. Galatians chapter 5. Is everybody there? Verse 16. Spiritual maintenance. What's the purpose of it? To maintain a kingdom mindset. Verse 16. Let's read it. I say then walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh what? Lust against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So that you do not do the things that you wish or desire. But if you are led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, which I tell you before, and just as I also told you in time past, that those that do what? Practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So these individuals, you got to remember, this letter was written to believers. So what had happened is these people lost or never obtained a kingdom mindset. Amen? In other words, there was a disconnect, wasn't there? Everyone say disconnect. disconnect. All right, let's go a little further. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Is what? Love. Love. Joy. Joy. Peace. I'm going to kill that fly. <laughs> Bell's above body here in Jesus' name. Okay, what is it now? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, which means self-control of herself. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have what? Crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk. In other words, if we say we live in the Spirit, then walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another. Walking in the Spirit is maintaining a right standard with God, which, which produces 
righteousness. Amen. And it's going to be required to be staying filled with the Spirit of God, doesn't it? It's going to be required of taking off the old man and putting on the new. It's going to be required of maintaining a kingdom mindset. And this only can be required and maintained by spiritual maintenance. There must be a constant maintenance. Does everybody understand? 1 Peter 4. We're to hate the works of the devil, aren't we? Too many people pet it. Oh, they compromise evil instead of expose it and get rid of it. 1 Peter 4, verse 12. Let's speak it. Are you ready? Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice in the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when he, his glory is revealed, you also may be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory in God rests upon you. And on their part he's blasphemed, but on your part he is what? Glorified. But let none of you suffer as a what? Murder, thief, evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, Christ-like, so you're not going to suffer of a Baptist, you're not going to suffer of a Protestant, you're not going to suffer of a Catholic. I'm suffering because I'm, it has nothing to do with it. He said, you're only going to suffer, and that's persecution. And some of the suffering is letting go of the old. Amen. Amen? That's a part of letting go. There's a pain there. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian because he is Christ-like, let him not be ashamed. But let him glorify God in this matter. Come on, let's speak it. For the time has come for judgment to begin in the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? So where does judgment begin first? In the house of God. Yeah. Now, if... The righteous one is scarcely saved. Where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. Some people are suffering because of what they sowed in corruption in the flesh. And they're trying to say, well, it must be God's will. No, you brought it on yourself. Amen. There are things people bring on themselves. You can't blame the devil. He's just looking for an open door. He's looking for access and anything that we can do. The number one access is our mouth. Yeah. Hello? 2 Corinthians 13. In verse 1. Remember, what you speak is what you what? Eat. What you eat is what you become. That's why we speak the word out. Why? Because you're sowing. You're what? You're sowing. That's how you maintain maintenance. You must sow. Maintenance is not without sowing. Let's speak it together. Verse 1. This will be the third time I'm coming to you. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. I've told you before and foretell as if I were present the second time. And now being absent, I write to those who have sinned before and to all the rest that if I come again, I will not spare. I, I think he was a little upset. Amen. <laughs> Since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me who is not weak toward you, but mighty in you. For though he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. How many of y'all want to live by the power of God? Amen. Amen. Well, then you got to deny yourself. But we shall live with him by the power of God toward, for, uh, let's go back, verse 4. For though he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Now what's the next verse? Examine. Everyone say examine. Yeah. Examine who? Yeah. 
yourself as to whether you are in the faith. That's a part of maintenance, isn't it? Amen. What are you going to examine? Your intent, your motives? Do you really have the kingdom mindset or is it about you? Amen. Are you willing to go the extra mile? Say, everyone say extra mile. Amen. It's amazing how people want to serve God, but they want to serve God at their convenience. Amen. Serving God is at his command. Has everybody got that? Amen. Serving God is at his command, not at your convenience. I think I'll serve God today. Oh, that's good. Well, you know, no, Lord, I got a lunch date. No, I got this. I can't do that now. No, Lord, I need to work all of this hour so I can pay this, this. I can't do that now. Far be it, I should sow in the spirit and reap life. Far be it that I should maintain myself. Has everybody got this? Very important. God is not looking for individuals to serve them as they feel like it or that their convenience. He's looking at the command. We're always waiting on the command from the Lord. Always. What's your command, Lord? What do you want me to do? That should always be there. What do you want me to do? If it's not, then it's about you. Amen? Is everybody okay? Come on. This is about examining. This is about maintaining. Why? Because if we're not maintaining a kingdom mindset, then we're maintaining a carnal mindset. And you can have all the former religion you want. You can dance, praise, hallelujah, and even speak in tongues and spe still be carnal. Because you're going to know by your own fruit if you don't see it, everybody else is. Amen. Hallelujah. Examine yourselves as whether you are in the what? In the faith. Test yourselves. Hallelujah. Not only examine, but test it. You know what? Ask somebody. Amen. No way. They might expose me. Come in for counsel. <laughs> ah, no way. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are what? Disqualified. But I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. Now I pray to God that you do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but that you should do what is what? honorable, which is well-pleasing to God, though we may seem disqualified. For we can do nothing against the truth but what? For the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. And this also we pray that you may be made what? Complete. Now, without the kingdom mindset, you can't be made complete. It's more difficult. It's more difficult. There's, why? Because the enemy's always putting hurdles and hindrances in our life. Because he's trying to get you to stumble and trying to get you to get off course. Anything he can do to put your eyes on you instead of the Lord. That's his job. And he does it very well. That's why Paul was writing these letters. These letters are corrections to the body of Christ and spirit-filled believers. Hello? Verse 10, therefore I write these things being absent, lest being present I should use sharpness according to the authority which the Lord has given me for the edification and not for destruction. Finally, brethren, farewell, become what? Complete, be of what? Good comfort and be of what? One mind. Live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. Examine your mindset which is a part of the spiritual maintenance. Submitting, has everybody got it? Are you submitting? Is that area of submission to God all the time? Lord, what do you want me to do? That's why the word says, acknowledge the Lord in all of your ways. People only acknowledge the Lord when they want something. Amen. Hello? Uh -huh. Lord, I really need this. No, you just need me. Amen. Submitting, or serving God at your convenience is not acceptable. Everyone say it's not acceptable. <laughs> we serve and submit upon his command. So we're always waiting for the next command from him. 
Lord, what do you want me to do? Amen? It's like a child that goes to their father. Dad, you know it all. What do you want me to do with this? I'm going to acknowledge you in this. How do you want me to walk today? What can I do to please you today? What are you doing? Making connection. One of the things you want to do is maintain connection. Always. Is everybody okay? Again, many only submit or serve when it's convenient. And they lose or, or, or miss what God is trying to bring and accomplish in their life. Genesis chapter 4. We've been through this before. I'm not going to go over and explain all this right now. But I want to use something out of these scriptures. In verse 1, let's speak it. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have required a man from the serpent. <laughs> we might as well just settle that right now. In verse 2, then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. In the process of time, <clears throat> it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Now wait a minute, you've got to understand something, that first of all, Cain was the offspring of wickedness, right? Now both of them knew because they watched Adam and Eve. Maintain. And the maintaining was sacrifice. God showed Adam and Eve before they left the garden to kill an animal that would make a maintain a covenant. Why? Because the Lord killed an animal and covered them with the skin. In other words, blood was shed. So that was acceptable to God. So Adam and Eve already knew what was acceptable to God. One was a tiller of the ground, one was a one who kept sheep. Amen? So in this, we've got to understand that because they both knew they would pass this on what was pleasing to God and what was displeasing to God. Amen? Now in verse 4, let's speak it. It says, Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel Amen. And his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. Why? Because he are, they already knew what pleased him and displeased him. And Cain was very angry and his countenance, what? Yeah. Fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, if you do well, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies where? At the door. So there's that area. In other words, if you do well, that means maintain. Amen? So there is a maintenance that you and I must maintain. So that we're always maintaining the kingdom mindset. And sin is lying at the door. In other words, there is a door. Jesus said, I am the door. Amen? But there is a door. Always. Okay, let's go a little further. Okay, so we do understand that there's a way of offering. Amen? God is looking for a what? An offering for me and you. The Word says something very powerful in this, and there's a right way to do things and a wrong way to do things. Amen? So in this, please understand that the Word says that our sacrifice of praise is an offering. So what comes out of your mouth is vitally important. Amen? Amen? What comes out of your mouth is vitally important. In this, what you're sowing, you're what? Reaping. There's an area where we must constantly examine ourselves. And in this, as we examine ourselves, are we maintaining the kingdom mindset or a carnal mindset? Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's go to Ezekiel 9. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. And then Jesus called out in my hearing with a loud voice saying, Let those who have charge over the city draw near, each with a deadly weapon in his hand. And suddenly six men came from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, each with his battle axe in his hand. One man among them was clothed with linen and had a writer's ink horn at his, at his side. 
Then they went in and stood beside the bronze altar. Now the glory of God of Israel had gone up from the cherub, where it had been to the threshold of the temple. And he called to the man clothed with linen, who had the writer's ink horn on his side. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark, a what? A mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry out over the abominations that are done within it. In other words, did they have a kingdom mindset? Yes. Does everybody understand? They had a what? A kingdom mindset. Why? Because they were, they were interceding for those and they were crying out to God that were what? Doing the things that weren't right. There were abominations. There were things that were not right, and they were interceding. Does everybody understand? Praise God. Let's go a little further. So in this, one of the things that we called that there was a mark that was put on Cain. Amen? And that mark that was put on Cain we call Antichrist mark. But there was another mark that you and I are sealed with. It's called the mark of promise. And in this mark, God is looking for individuals that he can mark that are willing to stand up for what is truth. Amen? That are willing to fight, spiritually fight, for what is right. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1, verse 13. Let's speak it together. It says what? In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of what? Promise. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all saints, do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of what? Wisdom, Wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And the what? Eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places. Far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. So we were sealed with the seal of promise. That is a mark that get, God puts on each and every one of us as we're what? Maintain obedience. Remember, the devil will try and come and steal everything, doesn't he? He comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. No matter what it is. Steal, kill, and destroy. We are marked with the seal of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because we are joint heirs and you and I have access to all things of God. Is everybody okay? Ephesians 4. In verse 17. And let's speak it together. This I say therefore in testifying to the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God because of the what? Ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with what? Greediness. He says, but you have not so learned Christ if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that you what? Put off. Put off what? Concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful loss and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. The word mind here means your soul. 
It means your mind, your will, your emotions, and your imaginations, your soul. And that you put on the what? The new man which is created according to God and true righteousness and what? Holiness. Holiness. Therefore, putting away what? Lying. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the what? Nor give place to the what? Nor give place to the what? Devil. Devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. And no, let no what? Corrupt. Cor corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for the necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the what? Hears. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all what? Bitterness, Bitterness wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. So we must be careful what comes out of the what? The mouth. That's the number one thing. What comes out of the mouth. Is everybody okay? Amen. Well, we grieve the Holy Spirit. How many people have known we talked before about people selling their birthrights and everything else? We are in a time and season right now where man wants their will and they want to do what they want to do instead of what God wants to do. 2 Corinthians 11. Spiritual maintenance. Second Corinthians 11 and verse 12. Is everybody okay? Amen. Welcome to Sunday Morning Live. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 12, let's speak it. But what I do, I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to re be regarded just as we are in the things of which they boast. For such as false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostle of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Believe me, your enemy comes in multiple forms. Amen? Amen? Therefore, it is no great thing that his ministers are also transformed themselves in ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. I say again, let no one think me a fool, if otherwise at least receive me as a fool, that I also may boast a little. All right, and this is so powerful, because here he's saying, look at man, your enemy is going to come in multiple, multiple ways. He comes in many forms. He can come in any way he wants. He even comes as a righteous minister. Amen. Amen. So we're going to know by the fruit, aren't we? And this many forms that he comes, what he's trying to do, he's trying to bring a place in your life, in my life, in any way that he can, so that we can be swayed or misled and come out of kingdom mindset Amen. and get into carnal mindset. Amen? Amen. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Glory. Let's speak it out. Verse 1. Is everybody there? And this I say, what does he say? But this, that, but know this, in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of what? Selves. Lovers of what? You think those are hindrances? Amen. Amen. Will that sway a person from having a kingdom mindset? Amen. Amen. They'll be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud. proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, Haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people do what? Turn away. Turn away. Everybody got that? Amen. 
For this sort are those who creep into ministries, households, businesses, and make captives of gullible men and women, load them down with sins, lead, led away with, by various lusts, always learning and never able to what? Come to the knowledge of the truth. Now Janus and Jasperus resisted Moses, and so these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith, but they will progress what? No further. no further, for their folly will be made manifest to all as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Octoch, I, at Ikeum and Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the what? The Lord, the Lord did what? Delivered. Delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer what? Persecution. Persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow what? Worse. worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from the childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which was able to make you wise from salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine and reproof, for correction and instruction and righteousness, that the man or woman of God may be what? Complete and thoroughly equipped for every good work. This is what's happening to believers that do not maintain the kingdom mindset. Amen? So we, you and I, must maintain a spiritual cleansing in everything that we do. Why? By repentance of the blood of Christ, speaking the word of God, forgiving others, staying filled with the Holy Spirit, departing from evil, sowing not only in kingdom works, but in the Spirit, denying yourself, being led by the Spirit, and not by emotions. Amen? Allowing God to build the house and not us and everything that we do because your enemy comes in multiple forms to produce false desires. Galatians 6. Hallelujah. In verse 1. Everybody okay? Amen. Let's speak it. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, consider, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and also fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one do what? Examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. Let whom who taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be what? Deceived. Deceive. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, he will also reap. For he who sows to the flesh of the flesh will reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not what? If we do not what? Lose heart. Lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are the household of faith. Examine your works. Examine your time you're spent. Examine the efforts that you're putting towards things. Examine. Why? Is it a self mindset or a kingdom mindset? Is everybody okay? And we're going to close at Philippians 2. Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded. Like Having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind, let nothing be done through the selfish ambitions or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also the interests of others. And let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself with no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and becoming in the likeness of men. 
And being found in appearance as a man, he what? Humbled himself, and he became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him, giving him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on earth, and of those under earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and the glory of the God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your what? Your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to do and to, to do for his what? Good pleasure. Do all things without what? Complaining. That's the mouth. Disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation and among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ and that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Spiritual maintenance, maintaining yourself clean. Amen? Amen. Maintaining that washing of the blood. Maintaining, but don't take no garbage. Amen. Amen. Don't be a wimp in, in Christ. You'd be strong and bold in the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Why? Because we want to maintain the kingdom mindset. The word says that the heavenlies are taken by force. So we want to become first strikers. Does everybody understand? In everything that we do. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace of all things that we've done that have offended you. And we ask, Lord, that the continued heart, mind, will, character of Christ Jesus would be formed in us and through us. And that there would be a, a kingdom mindset to fulfill your word and be about your business in true spirit and power. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.